Greetings everyone, I'm Dong Song Yu and this is our work sample to perform a large scale analysis on SE Android policy customization. Security enhanced links for Android aka SE Android implements a mandatory access control. It is fully enforced in all the commercial off the shelf devices since Android KitKat. SE Android performs extra checks based on a set of manually developed whitelist rules. These rules are called type enforcement policy rules. The policy rule consists of four tubes, the domain for subjects, the type for objects, the class for the kind of objects, and the permissions for the operations. We can use the minus Z arguments for PS and LS to see the domains and types aside for processes and files. For example, such a rule allows all the third-party apps to access their private data direct directories in data partition. And we can see that without the permits of SE Android, even the app, even the apps with root privilege cannot access the resources. This can significantly shrink attack surface and reduce the effects of malicious software. As the Android can also, as the Android also use attributes to facilitate the policy writing, one can use attributes to evolve plenty of domains of types in one rule. For instance, the rule written in app domain will permit all the app processes to access app data file in one rule. Further to avoid vendors adding risky rules in the device, Google write, Google write many never allow rules in the source code as assertions. All the newly added allow rules that violate the never allows would be denied in the policy compilation time. However, the never allow rules are not enough, especially the policy has been getting more and more complicated with the evolution of Android. Well, all the original policy rules are carefully and strictly written by Google, but considering that the policy is a set of whitelist rules, vendors has to add their own rules to satisfy their customized parts in the system. Even with the constraints of never rules, writing a robust policy is still challenging. Security researchers have already noticed that vendors didn't know how to write policies. And here is an example. There is an out of bound vulnerability in device MISC SD card labeled as MISC SD device by SE Android. By default, the MISC SD device can only be accessed by VOD processes in Android. So the vulnerable driver is not reachable by unprivileged processes. Thus, cannot be used for local privilege escalation. However, as shown in the red boxes, the debugging, the debug remaining customized rule extra allows an EM server process access this device node. So without, in, without the real set, attackers can use this unexploitable vulnerability to use the device. So our work aims to propose a universal method to help policy analysts highlight such unregulated rules which are risky or unnecessary, which we call the unregulated rules. And these are three main challenges to perform a large-scale analysis. First, the representation of policy may be different across devices, covering that the rules of the same semantics looks different. Second, merely based on the static representation of the rules, it is difficult to obtain sufficient semantics to evaluate the rationality of the target rules. Third, the boundary between unregulated or not is usually blurred for analysts. To meet these challenges, Simo takes a three-phase three method to analyze the customized rules in the manufacturer's devices. Our key insight is to understand the boundary of permitted and forbidden correlations in the official policy with the help of machine learning. At first, we managed to extract the policy rules from both AOSV and OEM device images. However, you may notice that the rules from different data sources can be expressed in different styles. The policy may also use different syntax and macros in different Android versions. Therefore, we have to unify the expressions for model training. All kinds of rules can finally be expressed as the atomic use, which contains five basic tubes with identical, gran with identical granularities. After obtaining the atomic use, we need to vectorize this use by extracting their features. The first four features are the basic tubes in the use. The others are Boolean features that can be obtained from the attribute definitions of the official policy. And to supplement discretionary access control information, 
We also managed to infer the user IDs of the subjects. Okay, sometimes similar operations may be expressed with different classes of permissions. For example, in this use, app processes and HAL Wi-Fi processes have similar functionality to send dump, dump information to dump state, even though they use different IPC channels. To characterize the latent correlations between subjects, we need to parse and vectorize the policy comment text for the corresponding types. Considering that the comment we concern about essentially defines actions of a subject, subject and the resources it can access, we manage to extract the keywords about who does what from the comments and represent them into vectors via NLP techniques. All the triplets from the same domains will be splitting, split into two parts, the ones from the low rules and the others from the narrow rules. Finally, two vectors will be generated by dot vect to characterize the target domain. After vectorize the atomic rules, we first manage to enrich, to enrich the dataset to balance the reading of allows and never allows in the official rules. Then use this data set to train the map to train the models and use them to classify the customized rules. Considering that access control model is slightly different across Android versions, we train five such models for each version of Android. The wild and deep model is a state of the art model that is widely used in recommender system. In fact, if you read the policy rules, you may notice that. The similarity between recommender systems and the policy analysis. In recommender system, researchers jointly use the liner and the deep model to learn the correlations among the users and items. It inspired us to to use a similar to use a similar model to learn the correlations among the types in SE Android. The table shows how we fed the features into this model. Then to evaluate the effectiveness of SIPL, we use 90% of the official atomic rules for training and the rest 10% for evaluating. It achieves over 98% accuracy. We also design a baseline algorithm uh, based on the KNN algorithm adopted by East Android, the earlier work that refines policy writing based on audit, on audit log. The result shows that their methods are not suitable for policy analysis. On analyze, analyze. We further perform a manual examination on the classification result of SIPO. In 368 customized atomic use, nearly 77% of them are confirmed to be unnecessary or overly per permissive. And with the help of SIPO, we perform a large scale analysis. The distribution of the data set is shown in this slide. Then we use SIPL to analyze these customized rules. At first, we can see how the policy customization evolves across Android versions. Over 20% of the rules in Android 5 are defined by app related domains, and a typical category of the unregulated rules in Android 5 is defined by co-screened attributes such as PROC, CSFS, and unconfined domain, which are confined by Google in the later versions. And in Android 6, because of more vendors began to add their rules, the percentage of unregulated rules has increased. Then in Android 7, at that time, researchers had noticed the issues introduced in the policy customization. So the, prob so the problematic use such as overuse of unconfined domain unlabeled hard has hardly appeared. And in Android 8 and 9, we noticed that more unregulated rules are about hardware abstraction layer. A possible reason is the introduction of project travel, which separates the lower level customized codes as well as the policy from the Android system framework. We also started the unregulated rules across manufacturers. For example, we found that Samsung performs heavy customization since Android 5. Samsung is the only one who defines new attributes named new trees in very early time. They play similar rules as base type of trees introduced in the official policy of Android 8. 
Most of these most of the these attributes are removed in Android 7, but several are still remained in the latest Samsung devices. Further, to start the overall ecosystem of policy customization across manufacturers, we analyzed the images from 72 unique manufacturers under Android 8. The top 10 manufacturers with the highest unregulated percentage are popular in some developing countries. Most of these rules are identical with the unregulated rules supported in earlier versions of the notable manufacturers' devices. And we wonder why these rules are introduced. Simple recognized over 50,000 unregulated atomic rules. We reviewed our original policy. In total, over 7,000 unique unique original rules are recognized. While due to the wild diversity of these use forms, clusterism is not trivial, we, but we finally distill four main categories. The misusing of attributes, the testing and the debugging related rules, and the outdated rules, and the granting excessive information to untrusted domains. To understand their security impacts, at first, we should understand what SE Android is designed for. Here is the official document about SE Android written by Google. Well, we found the unregulated rules may compromise all, all the four kinds of defenses provided by original SE Android. For example, with the access to log, set, log setting service, we propose a proof of concept attack to control the log password. And we can also directly communicate with the camera device's device node with an exposed device, with an exposed character device. And furthermore, some, some customized rules can even grant this privilege as privilege capabilities to third-party apps, which can provide a great convenience for Malaysia apps to control the system. And some socket-related use allow attackers to trigger one-day kernel vulnerabilities from unprivileged processes. Note that all these attacks above can be blocked by the original policy. We have reported these issues found in the devices of the latest Android versions to seven vendors, and four of them replied. Some of the rules were patched in the latest versions, but others are retained. According to their feedbacks, there are two main challenges in patching them. First, due to the complexity, it is challenging to measure the influence of one single rule on the system, even though the rules are too permissive, especially when there is no proof of concept for validation. Second, sometimes even the policy writer himself might be confused about the rules he wrote as time passed. Removing them may inadvertently cause system failures. Therefore, it is I think it is originally designed to identify the secret hazards of in situ rules and patch policy automatically, which is a promising research direction. And that's all. Thank you.